With SpaceX moving ever closer to Starship's fifth test flight, crews continue stacking the newest launch tower at Starbase, and Booster 12 roars to life. We also get our first look at Starship's Block 2 hardware, as well as a new test tank. Now let's dig into this week's update. Starting off this week, just after midnight on Friday morning, another tower section rolled out of the Sanchez site. The second module for the new tower made its way down Highway 4 to the launch site, and once there, it was parked in the staging area in preparation for stacking. A few hours later, showers of sparks could be seen coming from multiple locations on the office building, with crews continuing to push forward with the structure of the new facility. As the day dawned on Starbase, the orbital launch mount warp platform was moved away from the orbital pad as SpaceX prepared for another round of testing with Booster 12. A couple of hours later, the chopsticks were raised slightly up the tower. Their final position was not indicative of a potential spin prime test, but not high enough for a static fire. Around that same time, one of the Mega Bay 2 bridge cranes lowered its hooks and picked up a booster load spreader. This is notable because this building is designed for ship work, not boosters. At the office construction site, one of the telescopic boom grove cranes could be seen loading crane parts onto a waiting trailer. These looked to be like components of one of the smaller lattice boom cranes that had been working on the new building. Back at the launch site, the road was closed and the tank farm spun up for testing. After a partial load of Booster 12's propellant tanks, the rocket performed the expected Sprint Prime test of its 33 Raptor engines before depressurizing. Following the engine test, SpaceX performed a retraction test of the ship quick disconnect arm. The arm was quickly returned back to position. Over the next 10 minutes or so, multiple tests were observed on the engine compartment purge system. This system safes the engine bays by running inert gases through them in out vents of the vehicle's skirt section. Two additional retraction tests of the ship quick disconnect arm were performed over the next 15 to 20 minutes. Both times, the arm was swung back into position relatively quick. Late that afternoon in Mega Bay 2, the booster load spreader was lifted once again. This time, it was lifted off of the building's center work stand, where it had apparently been stored during the day. That evening, a modified ship forward section was rolled out of High Bay and through the ring yard. The section likely part of a new test article was then taken into Mega Bay 2 for additional work. Then, as crews were hooking it up to the booster load spreader, a modified ship aft section was rolled out of the Star Factory. The article was then staged outside Mega Bay 2 to await stacking with the forward section. Overnight, another section of the new launch tower came rolling down Highway 4 from the port of Brownsville. This is the final module that was shipped from Florida after being assembled at SpaceX's Roberts Road site. Just before 4 o'clock Saturday morning, the two modified ship sections in Mega Bay 2 were lifted together and transferred to the turntable for stacking operations. Later that morning, the tower module load spreader was disconnected from the top of module one and connected to the second module of the new launch tower. Back up the road at the build site, a new Starship payload bay was moved out of the Star Factory and into High Bay. This first section of Ship 33 is also the first for flight article of a Block 2 Starship we have seen. That afternoon, the chopsticks were raised up above the booster and then opened. Once open, they were lowered back down, now with one arm on either side of the booster. On Sunday morning, crews began removing the scaffolding from the top deck of the orbital launch mount. This was a good indication that a static fire was planned in the near future. Up at the build site, the first Block 2 nose cone was rolled out of the Star Factory. This new nose cone comes with significant changes, including new vents, a new tiling scheme, and most notably redesigned forward flaps that have been moved leeward. Shortly after arriving, we could see the reflections of the nose cone and payload sections being lifted for stacking. That afternoon, vacuum trucks were seen arriving at the launch site and backing up to the detention pond next to the launch tower. This is another sign of an impending static fire test. A few hours later, SpaceX performed a test of the detonation suppression system at the orbital pad. First thing on Monday morning, the chopsticks once again began climbing the tower. 
Eventually, they stopped and opened in the launch ready position in preparation for the upcoming static fire test. Several hours later, after the road was closed and stage zero spooled up, SpaceX began loading propellant into Booster 12's tanks. Just after 10 o'clock, workers began gathering across the road from the build site, indicating that Booster 12's first static fire was imminent. Just a few minutes later, the detonation suppression system activated, followed shortly after by the water-cooled flame diverter system. Booster 12 then roared to life as it performed a successful full-duration static fire test of its 33 Raptor engines. A few hours later, the chopsticks were lowered and closed around the top of Booster 12's methane tank. The arms were then raised slightly back up to engage the rocket's lifting points. Around that same time, like we saw following the spin prime, SpaceX wrapped up their testing with a test of the engine compartment purge system. Later that afternoon at the build site, a ship transport stand was seen being taken into Mega Bay 2. This stand was likely there to pick up the new test tank that's under construction. Several deliveries of the new groundwork equipment were spotted heading down Highway 4 to the launch complex as SpaceX continues to push forward with the construction of their second launch tower. This equipment included a new drilling rig indicating that groundwork around the site is still ongoing. Following the successful static fire test earlier in the day, the orbital launch mount work platform was brought back over to the pad once again to give crews access to the underside of the booster. That night, Booster 12's transport stand was rolled onto Highway 4. The stand then made its way back down the road to the launch complex to pick up the Super Heavy for its return to the build site. As the calendar ticked over from Monday to Tuesday, the first of the new shorter chopsticks for the new launch tower arrived at Starbase. The arm was then taken into the Sanchez site to await its eventual installation. A few hours later, the booster quick disconnect was detached from Booster 12 as SpaceX continued their preparations for its removal from the mount. Later that morning, once crews had sufficient light to work with, the second module of the new launch tower was lifted off its assembly and transport jig. The section was then rotated over the previous module and lowered into place. Once it was situated, crews got right to work securing the newest part of the tower in position. Meanwhile, out in front of the new office building site, a cover was installed onto a newly constructed tent. It's not yet clear what this tent is for or how long it'll be around. About an hour later, the chopsticks lifted Booster 12 once again. The Super Heavy was rotated over and lowered back down onto its awaiting transport stand. That afternoon, the now empty assembly jig from Module 2 of the new tower rolled out onto Highway 4, followed shortly thereafter by Booster 12. The pair then made their way back up the road to the build site. Meanwhile, back at the launch complex, crews were seen breaking up the concrete apron along the road of the opposite side of Hoppy from the D2 gate. It's expected that the gate will move to the new location due to the expansion of the horizontal tank farm. A little while later, crews disconnected the load spreader from the now secured second module of the new tower. They made quick work of bolting the sections together as the crane was disconnected less than 10 hours after its lift began. Back up at the build site, Booster 12 was moved into Mega Bay 1, where it's expected to undergo final preparations for launch. Not wasting any time, just after midnight Wednesday morning, the third module of the new tower was moved out of the Sanchez site and onto the highway. It then proceeded down the road to the launch complex where it was parked just inside the construction gate. Later that morning, the large Sarens crane used its auxiliary hook to lift a truss section for the elevator into the center of the second module. Meanwhile, crews continued to work removing concrete to make way for what's expected to be the new main entrance to the launch site. Over at the launch pad, workers were seen going up in man lifts to work on the chopsticks. We've seen these arms getting a lot of attention in the recent weeks to prepare them for a possible catch on the next launch. Later, a new section of cryogenic piping was lifted for installation as SpaceX continues to get all the parts of the tank farm expansion plumbed in. Just before lunchtime, with the elevator work done for now, the crane once again picked up the tower load spreader. The third module was then moved over to the staging area and connected to the crane. Late that night, the second lifting and catching arm arrived at the Sanchez site from the port of Brownsville. 
In the early hours of Thursday morning, a concrete pump truck unfolded its boom and began work on the ring yard side of the Star Factory. A little while later, another concrete pump truck was seen extending its boom up to the roof of the new office building. It'll be interesting to see what this pour is for, as standard offices of this type of construction typically don't have a concrete roof. Back over at the ring yard, the concrete pump truck was then repositioned before it continued work in that area. Down at the launch site, a piling rig was spotted working just inside the old D2 gate. It's not immediately clear what these pileys are for, but given the placement, could signal further expansion of the tank farm. Shortly after dawn, the Sarens crane lifted the next tower section off its assembly jig. Module number three was then lifted and installed onto the top of module two, completing the second stacking operation in just 48 hours. Around 9 a.m., the pump truck at the build site wrapped up its work for the day after having placed concrete near the Star Factory, the ring yard, and between High Bay and Mega Bay 1. Then about three hours later, the concrete work also wrapped up at the office site. What do y'all think the concrete on the roof is for? Could this be a rooftop terrace? Knock yourself out in the comments below and let us know what you think. Early that afternoon, a Britain drill line spool was delivered to the launch site. This steel cable is likely for the drawworks hoist that will be used to raise and lower the chopsticks on the new tower. By mid-afternoon, the third module had been secured in place and crews disconnected it from the Sarens crane. Similar to what we saw two days earlier, it took less than 10 hours from the start of the lift to the disconnecting of the load spreader. Once free of the tower module, the crane lowered the load spreader to the ground and was disconnected. That night, the Module 3 assembly and transport jig were brought back out of the launch complex and returned up the road to the Sanchez site for storage. Switching over to Florida, on Friday morning, SpaceX ferrying recovery vessel Bob headed out to sea for the Starlink Group 10-4 mission. And just a few hours later, Bob came back into Port Canaveral following what some are calling a failure of the Starlink Group 9-3 mission the night before. With the mission's second stage experiencing an anomaly and failing to deliver the satellites to the proper orbit, the FAA grounded the Falcon 9 fleet pending an investigation. That afternoon, Falcon 9 Booster 1076 had finished its dockside processing and was transferred onto an awaiting transporter. On Sunday morning, a short fall of Gravitas was towed back into port empty following the suspension of all launches. Four days later, the drone ship was towed back out to sea in anticipation of a return to work. The FAA had not yet cleared Falcon 9 for a return to flight, but this seemed to indicate that SpaceX was confident that this was expected soon. Bob then followed the tug and drone ship out to sea, further showing SpaceX's hope of an imminent resumption of their launch schedule. And there you have it, another SpaceX and Starbase weekly update brought to you by Lab Padre. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button if you haven't already, guys, and we'll see you next week. Thanks for watching. Lab Padres out.